Hello, everyone, and welcome back to AGDQ 2022, powered by Twitch. Let's see some claps for that amazing prize segment. My name is Lana Ruse, and I will be your host for the next couple of segments as we continue to raise money for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Well, folks, we did it. We hit our incentive for Step Mania, but that's not where this train stops. We have a secret bonus block of extremely difficult songs that Spooty will be dancing to if we can hit that $50,000. So let's see it happen, chat. Make sure to select your incentive when you send in your donations. Speaking of, let's read some quick donations before the next segment. We have $250 from Zello, who says, Spooty needs to play, so his step mania can be only slightly more broken than usual. If you want to see those really hard bonus runs, make sure to keep donating. All right, we have another $50 from Mere Knight, who says, Okay, okay, come on. We need that extra GDQ content from step mania. Let's get it. We have $25 from Mango After Dawn, who says, The Nod ITG community changed the course of my life and absolutely is an incredible place to be. Love you all in the Rhythm Game communities. Also, Chicken Alfredo. All right, let's give it up for some Step Mania. Take it away, Spooty. All right, hey everybody. I, uh, my name is Foodie Biscuit, and I'm here to show off a uh, special build of Step Mania called Non ITG. What's special about it? You'll see soon enough. Um, I, with running with me, I have uh, Taro Nuke, uh, da uh, Daiki, and Halcyon. You guys could introduce yourselves. Uh, hello, I'm Taro. I am the project lead for Not ITG. I am an engine developer, and I also made a lot of the content that you're going to be seeing today. I also worked with Cade Dev and Yin Yang Forty Eight on a pretty popular FNF mod that you uh, that was released recently that you may or may not have seen. Hey, I'm Dyke. I've also made plenty of content for a lot of four key rhythm games like Flash Flash Revolution, Osumania, Semania, and Not ITG. I've also made a good portion of the content that you'll be seeing today. And I'm Halcyonix, or just Hal for short, and I've also made content for this game. Uh, I've been on many different teams in the space working on mod files, tournament theme direction and graphic design, and uh, curious, uh, various Q&A testing. And uh, I think we were going to have uh, quite a show today, aren't we, yeah. Spooty? Yeah, so mm -hmm. basically what's going to happen for the next 82 and three quarter minutes straight is I'm going to be getting punched in the face with arrows, and these three guys are going to be saying, yes, we, we are punching Spooty in the face with arrows, here's why it's fair, and here's why it's good game design, and you're going to agree with them. <laughs> well, when you put it that way. <laughs> All right, anyway, without Come any gonna further be ado, I think we are ready to get started. Um, so yeah, from here on, uh, Commentaries in your hands, because I'm going to be busy hitting 18,195 steps. Let's get started in three, two, one, go. Go. Oh. With no breaks, mind you. Yep, it's back to back. So, everyone's probably aware of rhythm games in general by now. We saw a cross piece earlier in the marathon. And you know of games like Friday Night Funkin', Osu, Dance Dance Revolution, all that stuff. So. What we're showcasing is not ITG, the custom engine that Taru Nuke pioneered that stems off of Step Mania. So, obviously, you step on the arrows or hit your keys on your keyboard when the arrows line up with the receptors. But, as you can also see, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So, this showcase runs through the majority of files used for a mods tournament called Mods Bootcamp 3. It was run in 2019. Specifically, it was a sight reading tournament which meant that everyone who participated was seeing these files for the very first time and had to figure out in real time how to process all these visual and audio information that was given to them. So this specific song, Goodbye Bye Planet by Chroma, was a three-way collab between all of us commentators here, Taro Nuke, Halcyonix, and I, as a kind of qualifier song before everyone got into bracket play. It's a pretty good taste of what's to come. Um, and it might be a little tough for people to grasp what exactly is going on right now, but we will be doing our best throughout this whole showcase, as Spooty said, to explain our game design process and give little tips and tricks on how to read these files well. 
Yeah. And of course, Spooty has played these files plenty of times before. It's not actually a sight read run. So this run will be his attempt to get the highest accuracy on all of these charts in a row without taking any breaks. And as mentioned, that's almost 19,000 steps and jumps that he's going to be hitting. Just standing up straight, no support at all. So as we get into all these increasing difficulties in this showcase, we'll jump into tier one. We hope you enjoy the showcase. Wowee. So, right into the next song. As we can see, this song is HP1 by Verdampt. The overarching gimmick of the MBC3 pack of step files is that each file has an associated character. Uh, the character for this file belongs to me, but the characters were generally just our way of shouting out as many creators in the not-ITG modding community as possible. This chart is mostly made up of JRPG references, which you'll see as the song progresses. It's a lot of fun. Well, let's talk about some gameplay. Let's talk about what Spooty's actually doing here. So there are several different ways to read the notes in this game. Uh, probably the most important of which right now is reading by color. The color of the notes actually gives you the entire rhythm of the song, even if you've never heard it before. So the fourth notes, the, the notes that are on the beat are the red ones. The notes that are on the half beats are blue. And in between that, you have the 16th notes, which are green. Uh, so Daiki, do you want to talk a bit about Spooty's posture and his motions? <laughs> yeah, I could totally do that. Uh, another big component about all these files is that they have something what we would like to call good posture. So for any given file, you should be able to walk through the chart without having to spin around or get your legs tangled. I think I saw some Twitch chatters saying that. Uh, this means being able to alternate hitting one arrow with one leg, and if the next note is on a different arrow, then you step with your other leg, so it's just like walking. So this translates to keyboard play. If your keybinds are on the arrow keys, you can use your index fingers and just alternate hands the entire time. So knowing that these charts have good posture means that there's infinitely less guesswork because there's only so many ways a chart can comfortably keep its good posture. So it's pretty much an essential skill for getting started with reading these plot charts because combined with what Taro mentioned about the arrow colors uh, and good posture, you can stay on track with the foot that you're using at least if you don't know what arrow you need to hit or you can even keep track if you hit an arrow incorrectly. game over. <laughs> oh, the game's only started. <laughs> Indeed. So by now, you'll also realize that the combo number is starting to get big. So that will carry over through the whole entire marathon and uh, Spooty's judgments as well. Uh, he's been getting mostly Fantastics, a couple excellence here along the way. Fantastics being the tightest judgment window at 21.5 milliseconds of error. So a little over a one frame window at 30 FPS. Excellence are about 43 milliseconds, so 2.5 frames at 30 frames per second. And a great is 102 milliseconds, or about six frames. So everything else is a miss. And we're planning actually on doing a donation based on how well Spooty performs here. So I think we're doing one cent for every excellent he gets, 10 cents for every great, and a dollar for every miss. So <laughs> hopefully he won't get too tired. <laughs> uh, Anyways, since we actually have only access to two players' worth of arrows, we can manipulate them to do things you wouldn't be able to do otherwise with only one player active. So like you can see here um, in this song, Dreamin' of You by Jun Kuroda, you can see the alternating hidden of each of the columns to make things a little bit more complicated. Um, yeah, And so at the beginning and at the end as well, there was a separate technique that we use called a flicker. Um, and made it look like there was a little wall of playfields, even though there was only two, that, again, that we have access to. So it scrolls left and right, making Spooty uh, swap to a new playfield before the next one goes off the screen. It looks a little strange if you're not at 60 FPS, but you'll have to trust us that it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> I like to call the flicker effect the Atari Pac-Man effect. Because uh, in the Pac-Man, in the port of Pac-Man that was on the Atari 2600, uh, there was actually only one ghost. And they moved this ghost around every frame uh, in order to make it so that it looked like there were more ghosts than there really were. And that's sort of what we're doing. We're just moving the playfields around really fast. Uh, so this song is called Dead Ball de Home Run uh, by Nekomata Master. Uh, the difficulty is already starting to increase just a little bit. Uh, on our 20 point difficulty scale, uh, Dead Ball de Home Run is actually a five. Um, it's got a got some swung rhythms, we'll talk more about those later. Uh, but 
like the, the difficulty of the mods is also starting to go up just a little bit. Um, yeah, this chart is markedly a little bit harder than previous. Um, it also introduces our first mini game, which I'll get to in a little bit. But uh, those are those are just something that we can do in this engine now. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really, if you've ever played Rhythm Heaven before, you've probably seen something like this. This is a little bit of a batting show reference. See, the path that the arrows can take to the receptors is actually a mathematical function that can be influenced arbitrarily. And I, I, I just like making things that make people upset, really. Uh, <laughs> Becky, do you want to talk about the crossover? Oh, gosh. Uh, so, yeah, there are crossovers as well. Uh, I think this is the first song that has them, uh, where if you watch Spooty's camera very carefully right about now, you'll see his feet cross over his body. And that's exactly what we call a crossover. You are twisting your body sideways, but you're still preserving your good posture. And that's what's the most important. If you were ever wondering why the arrows were slowing down in the middle, uh, We'll see Pandora there's, again later. There's a ghost there. Oh, oh, what is... Yeah, what is, what is this song? I actually don't remember them. <laughs> oh, that's what the goal is. Now I remember. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely need chat's help one more time when the time comes. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Anyways, this is... This is one of the songs that uh, utilizes a really big collection of objects in the background, just like completely disregarding the notes. There's like a ton of cherry blossoms and we can like literally arbitrarily put a ton of objects all over in a, like a big sphere and make them rotate around. Um, Given an illusion that you're in like a cherry blossom storm, but really it's just a lot of images going back and forth. Even like the two player play fields are back to back, so that when they spin around, because the notes are only one sided, you can still see exactly what you need to hit, regardless of however it's spinning. <clears throat> so, Sabuti will be able to pick out uh, like these little transitions between the uh, front and back facing of these play fields and pick out what the notes are. Wait, which oh, song are we at right now? Yeah, so what was the song called again? We'll need your help, chat. I want to see the name of the song in the chat. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And really quickly, this is also what you call a D-pad or directional pad, uh, where the columns are scrolling in from uh, different cardinal directions into a plus sign, kind of like a D-pad on a controller. Uh, there's another variant that uh, scrolls outwards towards receptors, but uh, they're all kind of D-pads. Mm -hmm. They're all now uh, quickly known as the D-pad. For a small block. Right with a different series. <laughs> so here we have Nishi Nipori no Odori by Yu Takahashi featuring DY2. I mentioned in uh, HP1 that was played a few songs ago uh, that you have to read by arrow colors. Well, since I like making people upset, I've decided to just take those away. Uh, here, Spooty has to work out the rhythm of the arrows purely by looking at their vertical spacing, which can only be determined as the notes pass through this giant green pickle which can move up and down as it wishes. Uh, the chart's also throwing in more of those crossovers I mentioned earlier. Like you can watch Spooty lean over with his body to hit the left arrows with his right foot and vice versa. So this next section is quite interesting. There are always four arrows visible, but they're not always going to be in the standard left down upright configuration we're used to. So Spooty has to read the arrow directions on the individual arrows in order to work out what notes to hit next. This may or may not be a recurring theme throughout the rest of the marathon. And uh, one last point, you may be wondering, why is there a Toho here? Well, you see, in the early ITG modded community, most of us were really big Toho fans, so a lot of early ITG modded content is literally just Toho fan work. Um, I think we're gonna have time for a donation. I don't think so. I think we're gonna oh, head okay. into we'll something have, very we'll important. We'll have time for a donation in the next uh, in the next song, in the upcoming yeah. song. Oh god, what is this? <laughs> 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 so, yes, this is a bit of a Toho block. Uh, this is a reference to a famous 2009 Flash movie that I'm sure a lot of you have seen. 
Um, I felt really inspired to just recreate the whole animation, essentially. Uh, so I, I just like, I animated all the things, I created the 3D environment, and I replaced uh, Patchouli and uh, Hong Meiling with the Playfields, who are running away uh, using both playfields and a combination of like standard ITG mods to give the illusion of them running away from her. Now, <laughs> the playfields are actually doing a bit of bobbing and weaving. They have to jump and duck under the knives that are 3D that is being that are being thrown by Sakuya. Uh, the arrows also start to get a little bit stealthy in the upcoming section as they're trying to the cat character that represents the main cast in this tournament, which was a big production, uh, is hiding from Sakuya. So these, these arrows are getting a little bit hard to see, but it quickly returns to normal once Sakuya realizes that we're here. It's a bit okay. of a figurative mod. As the chart gets back to what it was doing earlier, we have time for a couple donations. All right, so we have $50 from Lightly, who says, I've never heard of or seen Step Mania before, but honestly, so excited for this exhibition and so thankful that we hit this incentive. Thank you, Spooty Biscuit, for this run, and let's get the bonus round incentive. All right, you heard them, chat. Let's get this bonus incentive going. Let's see those roll it in. I promise you want to see the bonus. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be amazing. It's very... Well, sp <laughs> Spooty hasn't broken combo either. What? 2,000 combo! 2,600! Okay. So... Boxes. So there's a way to make this... A, a, there's a way to make these charts easier on yourself, uh, and as a chart writer, uh, a way to ensure that it's fair to read. By just putting a really, really simple pattern in. There are lots of simple patterns in this game that we just kind of... We, we can, like, they're like bread and butter patterns that everyone playing the game just kind of knows. So as soon as the start of that pattern comes up, the player who's playing doesn't even really have to read the next few arrows because you've already got the muscle memory to know that when you see a diagonal line of arrows, you know, you got to hit left, down, up, right. There's lots of things like that that the player can rely on once they get to a high level of play in this game, at least. Mm -hmm. Pattern recognition is definitely one of the most forefront things you need to learn if you want to start playing this at a decent level. Which is why we recommend people start playing the base game where there's no mods, so you can build up that recognition. Mines. Mines. <laughs> oh yeah, they go to splody. Uh, don't hit them. Yeah, those, those little white circles with red dots in them. Those are mines. If you step on them, you will lose life and score. So you don't want to step on those mines. Uh, we generally put them in to stop people from mashing their way through the charts. That's that's bad form. You don't want to don't want a cheater. Mm -hmm. And you may notice the mines actually aren't in the columns. It's uh, a choice that the modders use to put anti-mash prevention, but also not distract from any of the notes, uh, especially in this lower difficulty bracket. Yeah, they're more like metaphorical mines. <laughs> yeah, and that's why they're represented with graphics instead. This was uh, the first part of our third place match in the tournament that happened. The next songs will, one, two, sometime later, we'll cover the rest of them. Anyways, difficulty jump. We're moving into the next difficulty tier of the showcase. So what comes after tier one? Obviously, it's tier 1.5. <laughs> the, the difficulty definitely shoots Baited. up, starting with rhythmical difficulty. In fact, I'm pretty sure that this song in particular, Hana no Butrenga by Janki, a remix on Yu Yu Ko's theme, is regarded as one of the hardest to have good accuracy on, just because all the purple notes that are very swing-oriented. If you look at the receptors right now, they're doing this little spinny dance, and this is called a black sphere. And it's named after the first modded song that utilizes motion, called Black Sphere, by Windu in the first iteration of Mods Bootcamp. Uh, because the columns are constantly swapping around and adjusting their vertical spacing, Spooty really has to be paying a lot of attention to both the color and the direction of the arrows to be able to read the chart. And so this purple background, in particular, and some other assets that come up at the end of this file are all references to previous Yu Yu Ko character model mod files that uh, have been done by other people. Uh, Kitsune, Windu, or a couple uh, that have done some in the past. <laughs> we really love shouting at other creators' work if we can. Mm -hmm. 
And so this is also one of the few charts that have what's known as a lateral. If you watch Spooty's foot cam carefully, he'll do like an extended crossover. It'll be right about now? I might have missed it. Uh, but basically, uh, his left foot crosses behind his body to do a crossover, then his right foot steps on the opposite side, which is a uh, lateral. Also, if you look at the play fields again, you see that they're kind of woven together to make it look like there's two separate players, but really they're just spread across the screen. Wait, was that an empty life bar that we saw? <laughs> yeah, he's, no, he's fine. His, yeah, his, his combo is so high. It can't have been empty. Yeah, but why is it floating up, though? Uh, random interjection. Uh, we sometimes in the community call lateral Scoobies because if you do them really fast, you look like the gif of Scooby-Doo and Shaggy running. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so this next one, Ayakashi Kakashi by DJ Toto featuring 3L, is one of my favorites, honestly, game design-wise. I'm really happy with this concept. Uh, what it essentially is, it, it, it's teaching a concept called chunking, where basically you have to read, the playfield will be visible quite clearly, and you have to read the next eight or so arrows while the player playfield disappears off screen and reappears somewhere else or in a different, slightly less readable configuration, you should still have that buffer from those eight arrows you read while everything was normal. And it also builds into a concept called context switching, which it ties into chunking quite nicely because a context switch is basically switching which playfield you're reading without dropping your combo or making any other sort of uh, mistake relating to that. So you store the next five arrows so you have time to actually find the next playfield that you want to read. And this file really hammers that home. Like if you can't do this, it's it's like it's chunk it or flunk it. Like you, you can't you can't not know how to do that if you want to pass this. And this is still level six. Uh, so <laughs> out of twenty. Out of 20. You, out of twenty, mind you. So you're gonna wanna know how to do this quite well before you... Oop, that one's flipped. <laughs> you're gonna want to... There's a little bit of a cheeky jump. Here's a bunch of crossovers in a row, if you haven't uh, seen this form yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we, we're just gonna... We're gonna keep... We're, we're, we've introduced all these things in a quote-unquote safe environment, <laughs> and you're gonna be thrown into a burning building as you... These files are biohazard. True. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. yes. This has just a little bit of an intro. Yeah, get, get some water. Good hydration break. <laughs> <laughs> hydration check for everyone. So this is a, this is a this is a probably a last song of the Toho block. You're, yep. No more no more Tohos after this, except for the part where I when I lied. Um, this one is <laughs> mostly about context switching as well, but here it's much more explicit about it. As Nui passes behind a playfield, that playfield will literally not become readable because the arrows will turn white, they'll point in wrong directions, and their vertical spacing will get all hecked up. So you really do have to keep looking left and right on this one. Uh, this one, it's also a reference to two separate tournaments. Like, we, me and Windu both made separate tournaments that featured the character Nui. So for this file, I basically just used a bunch of ideas that Windu used and a bunch of ideas that I used in our separate files, and we sort of both, we both represented both, like, iterations of the character in the ITG community. So you got the, the UFOs from Toho UFO. Um, but we do have time until the end of the song for probably two donations, I would say. All right, I got you. We have $30 from Jinx, who says, Ever since I was a kid, I always liked playing DDR. Then one day, I found out about Tarot's charts, and it added a whole new dimension to the game I love. Let's go, Spooty, go for a quad. Let's get the bonus round, too. Thanks, Jinx. Wow. All right. Oh gosh, a quad is when you get all fantastics. I think Spooty's a little past that right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Vigor by You is this song, and this is the first file I've made for this pack, and also the first file I've made that's Open ITG compatible. Not just not ITG. Uh, the reason for this is the previous two mods boot camps were all Open ITG compatible, which means all the files are able to run on stock ITG cabinet hardware with no strings attached, and we tried our best to continue that practice for MBC3 for maximum accessibility, 
who knows, we might see some technology later on. Uh, this gimmick right here, where the receptors drop towards notes, is called a driven drop. Uh, in the original ITD2, there's a song course called Driven. And on the second song, Energizer, the main gimmick for that whole song was that dropping effect. It's a bit of a callback to remember where we came from and how to recognize our progress as a community. With the drop of the song coming up, a bit of a twist with the playfield position comes into play where two separate playfields share receptors with each other in the center to create a new playfield, left and up from player one, down and right to player two. The chart here also gets a bit denser with some decently speedy 16th bursts, as you can see. Uh, the notes separating here also forces you to read ahead and chunk them, a technique we covered earlier during uh, Ayakashi Kakushi. And if you think you have a keen eye, maybe you can try and uh, seek out places where you have to chunk in later files, because it'll happen. To wrap up the climax, a big 16th drill into 12th into a bracket as a cherry on top. Uh, a bracket is a technical term for hitting two panels with one foot simultaneously, and it's called a bracket because you step on the angle brackets on the pad at the corners of adjacent panels in order to hit them. It's just one of the many different kinds of technical elements you'll see in, a, in, the, in pad charting rhetoric in general. And oh no! Oh no, the There's combo drops! The oh no! That's $10. That is... Yeah, that, that's a dollar. That's a really silly place to drop my combo. Oh wait, no, it's one dollar. Unlucky. <laughs> Right, it's okay. A seagull has decided to antagonize Moody now. <laughs> New Jackie. <Jake. laughs> so, the song is a little bit tangy, if you get my drift. <laughs> okay, the joke is that this, this song is a Citrus by Kamo Mesano, and here you have to chonk a lot. So even in this intro, Spoody's kind of picking out the sequence of jumps and notes are happening and uh, getting it in his head really quickly before they're at the receptors because it's really hard to react once they're doing their thing. So you can see all these notes uh, as the playfields are spinning are just fading to white. And that uh, makes Spooty do the same exact thing pretty much. He has to chunk really hard so that he can A, hit the notes, and B, find exactly where they are uh, when they come back up and then be able to continue processing the chart. Yeah. There's also, as you probably may have come to expect, a continued uh, expansion and growth of ideas in each of these files, how it evolves and changes over the course of each song. Like, this whole time the playfields have been like spinning around. You can see this nice little water wheel uh, that culminated from the previous chonking spinning thing. And of course, the fade outs and the expansion of game design continues, where the notes literally just go away. <laughs> <laughs> because we can do that. Oh. One clap from chat, please. Clap emoji. Oh, there we go. <laughs> God, we got that squared away. <laughs> I think we have a time for one quick donation before the song ends. All right, we have twenty-five dollars from Whole Pigeon, who says, "Shoutouts from the watch party in your Discord." <laughs> hey. <laughs> there are a ton of people in Discord. We are watching you. All right. Oh Ooh. boy. It is time for Snow Motion by Kofu. This is Puro's first file. A So Puro is another contributor to Mods Bootcamp 3. Puro is a demo singer from Finland who is generally, is currently studying like film production actually, um, and is just all around excellent visual designer. Uh, this is the first not ITG file, like not ITG exclusive file. All the files up to this point are playable in open ITG as well. So this file introduces a, a, an interesting co a concept, single column reading. The columns are gone, you only have the arrows. <laughs> All right, here's our first shader. <laughs> we got arrows made of crystal. They're made of ice. It's just something Puro felt he was able to do, so he implemented it. Uh, we got, we got, we got blur effects, we got transparent holds, it's really a visual mm -hmm. treat, this file. This is, this is definitely the technology I mentioned earlier. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is just is, it to a T. Because Pro can just do that. 
Yeah, like this is this is what not ITG can do basically, and it's not mm -hmm. like super hard to do this stuff. Like anyone can get into this, get in, get on the Discord server, check out the how to make things, and it's mm -hmm. I mean it, at its core it's just step mania with like with more stuff you can do. So the end of the song is pretty much just the beginning of the song, but slightly more complicated. So we got time for a donation. All right, we have fifty dollars from Minty who says. The Not ITG scene is an awesome testament to the amazing things a community can achieve together. So many wonderful people have come together to inspire each other and create some truly incredible experiences, both to play and watch. You definitely want to see all this, so let's meet that bonus incentive. Mm hmm. True. Absolutely. Very well said, too. Uh, oh. Jump. Oh, you okay, got some oh, science. No. We got some Koi Hado by. This is. This artist title is really long, so I'm just going to say Tomosuke because that's who it is. Um, <laughs> so starting off, we got a little bit of a physics engine that I decided to put together. Uh, you got some play fields that have like box 2G attached to them, and we're going straight into Rhythm Heaven. Uh, <laughs> just throwing a quick, <laughs> quick reference. Um, yeah, no, I, I decided, why not, right? We got, we got physics, we got conveyor belts. Uh, let's just put, let's put it in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and NTG is such an expensive engine, we can put literally anything we want. Mm. Even though this is only game. open ITG compatible. This one is open ITG compatible, actually, yeah. But, it um, is. so this is our first raw column swap, I think, where the columns literally just swap. That's a really hard technique to actually play, so I actually don't put those in a lot of my charts, even at high level. Uh, but if the density is low enough, uh, it's, it's fine, really. Especially at this level, anyway. This is another flicker, as I mentioned. And we're back to the conveyor belts. This time the playfields... <laughs> windows. This time the playfields go behind these sort of radiation scanners. Just make it a little <laughs> bit harder. You know, as you do. Uh, throwing in another Rhythm Heaven reference quickly with a mysterious unknown doctor. And back to some like wavy flying stuff, DDR 2014 background. <laughs> a bit of a throwback. Bit of a throwback. One donation. All right, <laughs> I got you. We have $50 from Good Guy 3 who says, if this is the regular run, I have got to see what the heck extra super difficult entails. Let's meet that incentive. Mm -hmm. And going a banger alert throws right into tier 2, aka the tiebreaker for tier 1.5 is destroyed by you. Uh, this is where you start to see more of a drastic difficulty increase, where the, mod gets, where the mods get harder to read and the chart gets more dense. And to highlight this curve, uh, Spooty has less breathing room to miss because life bar is on. Uh, from a full life bar, 10 consecutive misses will fail you, and you cannot regain life unless you have over oh 10 times. And just when you think the Tohos were gone, <laughs> Tenchi, Tenchi jumps out and punches you in the face with arrows and makes quite a few mocks on your screen just because Tenchi don't play no games. She do what she do, and right now <laughs> she feels like killing you. And as the section ramps up, the cracks in the screen gets larger to obscure more notes and tries to distract you from jumping ahead during the super quick uh, transitions. And during the drop, we get sent to the ether, an ether that's a direct reference to the file size mode a file that Windu made as a final stage to Windu Hates You 401k, where the character featured in that stage was also Tenshi. With all these references and callbacks, you may be able, you may be able to uh, infer how deep-rooted the mod scene is in its history. As we start to reach the peak of the file here, the receptor sharing gimmick from Vigor with a different receptor configuration comes back, combined with hard-to-see crossovers and a quick 16th burst, uh, all the while continuously swapping between up-scroll and down-scroll. And see, Tenchi has such a ball destroying you. She put the background graphic upside down. That's actually my fault. It was a complete accident during development of the stage, but I thought it was too goofy to not keep. So I just, I just kept it. Really? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and by the way, this and is a, this is an and a nice point. soothing outro. Nice soothing outro to alleviate the concussion you just suffered. But now for something completely harmless with the world's largest asterisk. Taro, take us on a journey. Yes, this one! So this one's <laughs> Planet of Journey by Yusuke featuring Itsuki Natsume. 
uh, Hal had made this file and it didn't have a background and he was just like, I need a background for this one. And I was like, I got you. And I like, disappeared into my cave for like five days and just put together this like pump it up style music video for this song featuring these little aliens that go to this, these, they, they visit all these planets. And if you look at all the planets, you can see some Whoa, meme ones may or may not there. be planets. We don't know. You never know. It could still be a planet. Yeah, like crouton's a, crouton? a planet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> crouton. So crouton. this file, this file also introduces teal notes. They're generally considered in the ITG community as the funny arrows because teal generally just means unquantized. So that rhythm could mean anything. This is literally mm-hmm. like, well, anything with a snap to 190 second notes, but. There's literally no indication of what the rhythm is. You just kind of have to feel it out by listening to the song. Here they represent represent 64th swing, but I'm really glad you convinced me not to convince you to change them because we're considering having them as 16ths because they're just really hard and I can't do them. Um, mm-hmm. But the thing is that at this BPM, uh, 96th swing, which is what this is, uh, 96th swing at this BPM, Hitting that as a 16th note will st- still give you a fantastic because 96 and 16th in this context are only 0.042 milliseconds apart, which is wait, way wait, wait, wait. less than the fantastic window is. Like, you don't wide. have to hit them a swing? No. You don't. <laughs> just, <laughs> what? just turn your brain off. <laughs> what do you mean you don't have to do them? It's easy. Just <laughs> hit the arrow, man. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to another mini block. Oh, this one! <laughs> this is a fan favorite. This one is this one is the song is called Random Box by Lottie. Uh, this is the start of <laughs> I promise you it's only two songs long. Uh, the My Little Pony block. So <laughs> A character from season uh, two of My Little Pony, Discord, appears in a stained glass window. And I really like that. So I vectored it in Flash, animated it in Flash, and wrote a little script to port the Flash animation to Lua so I could just import it into Step Mania and have him dance around the screen while moving the background. It fits the song really well. It looks really funny. And <laughs> I, I just, I, it's just a vibe. Mm-hmm. You really so just got to vibe in here. Just vibe with them. Now we're going into what the song is actually known for, uh, the random box itself. Discord is brought out today. We got references to lots of games. You see Mai Mai. Uh, shout out to Starrod Kirby 86. We saw play Mai Mai last year. Shout out to Undertale. You got some Rhythm Doctor in there. Shout out to 7 Beat Games, 2DX. And now we're going to start throwing them in all willy nilly. Just back to back. <laughs> And you yeah. just gotta deal with it. You just gotta deal with it. He gives you a bit of a break here, which gives us a bit of a break for a donation. All right, we have $250 from Junjo Story, who said what? it was hard to tear my eyes away for a moment, but I had to so I could donate for the Step Mania bonus round. We need more of this mind melting run. You are so right, Jojo. <laughs> let's, let's go. The so the box isn't done, though. Oh, God, Legend is all the. Oh, God, Car. car? 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 Some cars in the chat? Legend of Zelda jump scare. Car? Car? Shoutouts to Mr. Box in a Box for the car graphics. And the Legend of Zelda graphics. And for the next song in the uh, My Little Pony block, the next and final song in the My Little Pony block, we have a character file for Pinkie Pie and Vinyl Scratch, Trigger Happy by p Light. Uh, this features lots of references to uh, Windu and Ken Files, uh, Minty Dragon, who actually donated earlier and, ha- and had had his comment read. Um, yeah, so we got we got the uh, hooves from Vinyl Scratch as she moves the playfields as if they are actually records, in a way that fits the music just perfectly, honestly. And then we got references to Mods Bootcamp 2 that actually also featured this song, uh, but as part of the medley for the end of Mods Bootcamp 2. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, shout out to Condor. Ooh. Right here, this section. Mm-hmm. This is the KAC medley reference section. This is actually quite tough to read if you don't know what you're doing. Because mm-hmm. it, it turns white and you lose color info for a bit. 
Mm. Spooty, fortunately, absolutely does know what he's doing. <laughs> he does play the video game. Mm. And now it's time for Pinkie Pie's section. Uh, here she just changes the text on the judgments and makes the screen go all Man, sugar fabularific. <laughs> Spooty's not going to be getting any judgments less than fantabularific, I don't think. Oh, oh super duper. Oh, duper. You had to say something. <laughs> All right, we got time for a quick donation. All right, we have $25 from Squiddy, who says, Love seeing the funny arrows being stomped. Always so visually appealing. Thanks, Squiddy. I concur. Party cannon. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty dense. A lot of stuff. Mm. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Right. So it's not just My Little Pony we like to reference. Uh, for some reason, UKSRT 3, which was run by me in 2013, was based on Neon Genesis Evangelion. So this, char this song's character is Kaoru Nagisa from Evangelion. And I just picked a song that I sort of, that I really felt like fits the character. Uh, I also used a cover that has a different cut of the song because the cut that they used in Sound Voltex, which is uh, where all of the songs in Mazda Camp 3 actually came from, uh, cut out my favorite part of the song, uh, which is the part that is coming up after this, I would say. Uh, while we wait for that to start, and when it starts going on, the part with all the sensor beeps, that is, uh, we have time for a donation. For sure, we have $50 from Bookworm42, who says, One of the highlights of online events is always the Rhythm Game Showcase. Great job so far, Spooty Biscuit, and good luck with the rest of the songs. Let's get the bonus incentive. Let's get it, Bookworm. <laughs> I really hope he gets the bonus. Popoko! <laughs> Popoko just kind of shows up for a sec. Don't worry. <laughs> I actually almost forgot you put that in the file. I legitimately <laughs> forgot I put it in there. And I put it in there! <laughs> you baited yourself. How do you feel? Uh, baited? <laughs> Fair enough, have a nice day. Uh, just a nice a bit of chaos before the end of the song as we wrap this one up. Watch out for those mines. Oh, they're just arrows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there, there are definitely no mines to worry about coming up. Yeah. Because the song's over right here, obviously. Watch out for the <laughs> Watching that live is so good because people like launch themselves off the path to miss the yeah. mine. It's like a cat pickle like gif. Yeah. <laughs> and now for so the good. untrustworthy notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is, this is Junk Mania. Uh, I believe my second file that I made for this. Um, it features a gooey cat called Tack, made by Tetez. Uh, this file will showcase some of the trickery that we can pull with uh, with Step Mania, especially with OpenIPG, some of the tech that we use to uh, pull off these effects can be a little bit more complicated than, we, uh, than if we were putting it in IPG because of how, uh, like the differences in resources in the engine. And we're gonna be seeing that really, really soon. Mm. Right about now. Right about so here. this is where we lie to you for the first time. Where the arrows are scrolling up and they're pointing in the absolute wrong direction right before they hit the receptor. So you have to actually read by column there instead of by the arrow direction. Mm -hmm. That's something that's made really easy in not ITG. We have uh, ways to actually spin the arrows in not ITG, but in open ITG, there's actually not really any good way, so it's very much of like a janky workaround to get that to work. Mm -hmm. If you saw the receptors flashing really fast, it's because the mod that was used is rotating the notes based on the beat. And in order to position the notes so that they're uh, in multiples of 360, so that they're pointing in directions that are sensible, uh, we use stops, which basically stops the rotation in their tracks in accordance to the BPM, and we can control uh, note rotation that way in open ITG. 1700 combo. Ooh. Kashibari, 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. no ai wo by Harunaba. Uh, we're, I mean, so the previous file kind of, kind of did actually lie to you. This one doesn't lie to you. I mean, you can see that the arrows are in the correct places once the playfield starts spinning. But Ooh. actually, let's talk about this rolling fade effect. There are actually two playfields, and the visible region is scrolling down as the. Uh, uh, the visible region on each playfield is scrolling down, so you have to soft context switch, essentially. But now we get to the rotation. Mm -hmm. Now, you can Whoa. see that the arrows you have to hit don't change, but it's upside down. I still sort of make little mistakes here, because mm -hmm. you have to just train your brain to hit the wrong arrow compared to what you see, essentially. Mm -hmm. If a playfield's rotated upside down, like in here, uh, the notes are not counter rotated, so you have to do that counter rotation in your head. Do you want to talk about and the it, projector? <laughs> yeah, talk about the projector. Oh, the projector strat. So there was a file called Necrofantasia, which did very much this effect, except it was a constant spiraling rotation. So there was a developed a projector strat where you played this game on a projector and had someone hold up the projector and start rotating it counter so that you could read the chat <laughs> correctly as it went on. Bit of a cheese strat, but hey, you do what you gotta do to get the clear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, big lateral there. Alternatively, you can just do a handstand every single time something like that comes up. Oh, you that's would do that, Mikey. <laughs> yeah, you would. <laughs> I saw you rotating your whole head while you were playing Golden Rule. <laughs> it helped. Oh boy, guess what? It's time for some juggling. Oh no. This is the big difficulty spike, honestly. Uh, we recently upgraded this to 11, uh, just because so many people were complaining about it. It's... <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's extremely hard. It's extremely non-standard reading. You basically have to hit the notes by uh, reading what arrow is on the juggler's box to trigger that juggler to bounce the ball in order to not drop the combo. And mm -hmm. the charts that aren't in that are just really, the, the parts of the chart that aren't in that are just really dense and they have these really wacky rhythms with several consecutive green notes that don't have any other notes around them. That makes it pretty hard to keep the rhythm going because you gotta go like ba ba da ba 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 da, and people mm -hmm. people's brains don't do that normally <laughs> when listening. Yeah, to really, music. It really stretches your brain muscles to like actively keep in time with the music. Mm -hmm. We got a pretty a, a quote unquote normal section of chart for a bit, so we got a donation read uh, moment. For sure. So we have twenty five dollars from Mr. Sun who says. The first time I was exposed to mod charts, I was hooked. Such a creative way of playing a rhythm game. Let's dance to prevent cancer. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Sun. Also, be sure to get those donations in for the bonus at the end. Because mm -hmm. I Far absolutely promise yeah. it's like... 40%? It's yeah, like, so we still need just under $30,000 to hit that bonus incentive. So let's see those coming in. Every dollar counts, whether it's five, fifty. dollars we love to see it coming in. <laughs> yeah, no, this is super important, guys. This is an 11. <laughs> You're going to want to see the 20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for the ending, more bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, whoops. It's tea <laughs> time. Tier three. Time to cry exactly three tears. <laughs> Ignore the compass in here. <laughs> Ooh, but everything, it feels like everything up to now is like happy fun and games, and now we're in tier three. And things are getting a little spicy. So this song is C18H27 and a three, otherwise known as Capsaicin by Team Grimoire. And then, oh gosh, the difficulty goes up so high. So out of all the tier threes in this event, there was one that was passed during the live event. Only one. It wasn't this one. <laughs> so this, this relies on heavily uh, ignoring the horizontal spacing of the notes because all the columns are gone and only reading based on the arrow direction. But because of how the fast, because of uh, how fast the song is and the way the arrows occasionally rotate into an incorrect direction, Spoody has to be like absolutely on his toes as he is <laughs> the entire Quite time literally. watching the play fields as they spiral across the screen. By the way, there is a crossover in there. <laughs> I'm sure yep, it just happened. Like... 
Anyways, this middle section is a callback to Mods Bootcamp 2, where the final song had a section that did similar mods to this song, uh, Panicolic. Most notably, this is probably the hardest section ooh, to score on because of those jackhammers, or jacks for short. Those are those repeated notes. Um, but, oh gosh, those jacks are so fast that you hit, have to hit at least, uh, actually, exactly seven stomps a second to get perfect accuracy. I think a miss is pretty much expected there in a run. And then we have the ending, which is just a just look at this. You're making deal with wall. It. <laughs> There's <laughs> actually a vague play field in the center. Vague. I tend to just the read very vague. Yeah, go on. Yeah. The receptors are moving back and forth across the screen. They're dipping down, and it's just like you latch onto something. There are boxes in there to make your reading life a little bit easier, but. Spooty still handled that pretty well. He's keeping 140 combo coming out of this. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> where are we going now? Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a trip to a location. I, I forgot where we're going, but I, I'm sure I'm going to Unspecified location. Uh, right now, where are we? Gorge. 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 So this is what this is an effect I like to call a, prox, uh, a, a wall. It's not a proxy wall yet. Um, Almost this is a wall, and I mean, I feel like the name is pretty self-explanatory. It's literally just a big wall of notes. But the hard thing about walls is knowing when one playfield starts and another ends. It can it can get quite difficult. So that's where the chunking that I mentioned earlier also comes in. Like once you have a playfield, it's very good to remember as much of it as you can, like that you saw because it can be very useful if you lose your place, which does tend to happen a lot in proxy walls or walls of any kind. <laughs> you gotta be pretty careful not to lose your place in these driven drops with your back. Gorge. Gorge. And we go back into the gorge. We have another prox we have another wall. The notes are rotating a little bit. They're also slowing down and speeding up just a little bit. Not too much. I'd say it's still pretty hard, though. This is a 13 uh, out of 20. Uh, we do have time for one quick donation. All right, we have $25 from React, who says, just wanted to shout out and thank Not ITG and the whole crowd behind it for paving the way for mod charts in dozens of rhythm games following it. All of you have done wonders for the rhythm game scene as a whole. Thanks, React. Please, we need to get this. We need to see the extra stuff. Please. <laughs> Please. Where are we at with that now? 44%. Oh, 22k. We're getting there. First DLC file here. So yep, this file this wasn't is... actually played in the main tournament. Uh, this was released after the tournament finished, after we had uh, cleaned up a bunch of stuff. And yeah, I think this is our only DLC file uh, as of currently right now, this instant. Mm. Mm. Yep. So, okay. yep. I decided <laughs> I'm gonna directly reference Sound Voltex here. I created those with like I just hand wrote that geometry and like hand wrote a quote unquote Voltex chart for it. And clap, clap. <laughs> Get some clap emojis oh, in the chart. That was perfectly okay. timed. Um, here uh, is probably the worst gimmick I've introduced to the meta. Like I. I'm not a fan, and I'm the one that did this to, to all of us, but I introduced a gimmick where you have a red play field, you have a green play field and some red ones. On the red play field, literally just a fake chart. If you start reading that, you'll die instantly because you just won't be hitting the arrows that are actually in the chart. Um, and once I opened that Pandora's box of game design, people just started putting them in charts, and now I hate it. I don't stop it. <laughs> <laughs> the true feelings have arrived. <laughs> and now, and I with every iteration of this, more kinda, play fields getting out. Yeah, there's five now. You just kind of, I just kind of got rid of the flashing. So you got to remember the first one that flashed. Keep that one in your mind. Uh, here's more red arrows coming up. They're also not spinning, so you can identify them as the fakes. Uh, and then we move into another gimmick where fake arrows come in from the top and the gaps in the arrows become where the real arrows were. Spooty quickly <laughs> does a spin. Totally necessary spin, by the way. And the last Toho, I think, is defeated. The last one? Wait, really? Are there more? Maybe. <laughs> you sound excited. Anyway, 
this is Sailing Force by Penerary, and I think this is probably my best file from uh, this entire event. Does a lot of unconventional things that don't seem like natural occurrences within like it's the base game of not uh, of ITG. Things that you normally see in not ITG exclusively. Like how many playfields was that now? Uh, it's actually only two. Um, since again we have exact access to only two playfields in Open ITG, um, but. All the zoom effects are done in such a way that it makes it look like so many more. So if you pause at any time, you'll only see two playfields, I promise you. <laughs> but yeah, this is the only tier that was passed uh, during the live event. And this is still hard with like the the rhythms that have definitely bumped up in density alongside of the mods, where it's basically oscillating. The, the playfields are doing a wave. Because ah. <laughs> it's sailing, of course. And then the it ocean. goes really fast. Two playfields. But yeah, remember, only two. <laughs> <laughs> We're not like the yeah. water. <laughs> yeah, sometimes when the song calls for it, there is breaks in difficulty like this. Uh, but it definitely depends on the song itself. You gotta attune the mods to the song as closely as possible, because then you can go to like the ramp up section where you move at hyper speed again. Um. But yeah, like in a, this a, a nice ballad won't have an intense effect or anything like that. And the one of the only slowdowns in this making it even harder time to time and a speed up into the end where it literally speeds up to max speed, where um, the speed of the playfields match up somehow perfectly to let you grasp exactly what the notes are as they're flying past at max speed. <laughs> oh boy. Oh I'm, no. Oh, no. I'm sorry that everyone has to listen to this. So, <laughs> this character is a fan favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty iconic sentient, in the community, actually. She is a sentient virus who has possessed you and can make you hallucinate to see her. Is there anything you want to say about this uh, character? There's a red and green play fields right now that's going True. on that gimmick that we talked about. Mm. But anything you want to say about the character, Daiki? Oh, of course. I love Shane. Like, I really love Shane. Like, how, how much? And, like, a lot. <laughs> Everyone is going <laughs> to put right. you out to pasture. I hope you know that. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of references to UKSRP 8, the, the tournament where Shane debuted in. Like this mm -hmm. uh, Shane Cube, as we, we call it. it um... <laughs> <laughs> Which is a reference like you just to realized the joke. <laughs> <laughs> we got D pads in the Shane -pad, Cube. This D pad, when I first saw it, I was crying laughing. Because <laughs> that's it's a wiggle so it does. Janky. Yeah, this one is obviously not ITG. I, I say obviously, but I mean, there's a lot going on here, so. Really, it's definitely some of the technology of, of all time been put to good use on this kind of song. Mm -hmm. It's almost the, over. We're, we're almost done here. The intensity is going to start ramping up pretty soon. As if it hasn't. As, it, <laughs> as we start inching towards the upper end of the scale. Uh, speaking of upper end of the scale, get those donations in for the bonus at the end. Uh, very scary scary content waiting at the end of that road so if you want to see it get them up now this song is uh cloud nine by yunosuke uh which is my not a cheesy specific file which is kind of an obligation uh featuring a character named kyo who i made a long time ago before this uh, what you're going to mostly see here is a showcase of some amazing artwork i'll get to that in a second uh super tricky transitions and speedy column swaps uh, with some funky rhythms on the side. But the main thing I want to touch on is how pretty this file is. I mean, it's not my doing, actually. It's all thanks to the various artists that we have contacted, uh, contact with, one of which is on the couch with us right now at Tarla Nuk. And uh, an S-tier artist by the name of R. Mao, who contributed to brief background shots of the character in question. You might have seen that at the very beginning of the file. The power that these two bestowed on this file really helped push it to what it really meant what it's really meant to be and uh i consider this my formal thanks for that because i don't think i actually ever think uh, for example the light masses in the background is Charles doing uh, is to represent a bunch of fireflies 
Uh, Light fun, passes? Fun fact, those have a specific abbreviation that we legally cannot say, but if you figure it out, uh, we're not sorry. Light mass. <laughs> and to this extent, I believe, <laughs> this, uh, this truly exemplifies how much the Stepmania mods are in our form notion rings true, because with an incredibly flexible en game engine like Not AKG, you have complete freedom to implement your ideas and represent the song in ways that are ne unique to you. Uh, much like in drawing or music production, everyone in the community has a style that you're able to immediately associate with them. Whether it be artistry, motion design, charting rhetoric, uh, whatever wacky new thing the community comes up with, it's all amazing to see. Right. Ooh, so, what are those notes doing? <laughs> Dark Matter by Yo. Uh, you probably immediately noticed that's not how arrows are supposed to look. Well, <laughs> this is another file from our uh, Finnish uh, graphics programmer, film studio, uh, fil film, film studies major. Uh, Kuro, and he just wrote and used a lot of shaders along with his boyfriend Coot, and they generally just brought this file the graphics that it deserves. So we have they smashed it with this file quite literally, actually, because uh, Playful is <laughs> getting smashed against the wall. Kuro's bear character Karhis uh, was animated by me uh, punching the playfields into the walls, and. <laughs> I don't know, it just really shows his strength. Uh, there's a more shader funny happening right now. Uh, in the Speaking of shaders, uh, special shout out to FMS Cat who implemented uh, native shader support in, an I in uh, not ITG, which allowed all of this to be possible. Uh, custom fragment shaders and vertex shaders. What it really do anything you want. Really. Shown right here as the arrows bounce off the ground and turn into gelatinous blobs and then come back up off the ground and need to be hit again as they hit the ceiling. And the arrows aren't supposed to do that. <laughs> um, while we wrap back to previous, we have time for more donations. Let's get that. Let's get that donation map. All right, mm -hmm. we have twenty-five dollars from Angela H, who says, "Spooty, are you a step mania god?" I have to donate toward the extra, extra hard charts because I can't even imagine what they look like. We're well on our way, everyone. Let's see those donations roll in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Mods Boot Camp 3 had an overarching, uh, overarching oh, yeah. storyline where everyone gets possessed, and that's why they're all character files. Uh, also, oh, oh well. uh, This one in particular <laughs> was after everyone has been uh, cleansed and you're doing some warm up exercises. All right, Spooty, uh, feet shoulder width apart. Make sure your scroll speed is okay. You're not holding the bar, which is good. You're not a cheater, and we can go <laughs> on. <laughs> well, you actually just did that. <laughs> yeah. So pretty much um, the character talks throughout the whole thing. And oh, there was a crossover there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that can carry commentary if you if everyone just reads what's on the screen. So <laughs> I think time for a lot of donations. Maybe a couple, actually. All right, let's get these in. $50 from CDTCS, who says, I feel like these commentators and I have vastly different opinions on what lower difficulty bracket means. Happy to see Step Mania, not ITG, showcased at GDQ. Loving the exhibition, and let's get that extra, extra hard bonus incentive. <laughs> Where are we at on that, exactly? Uh, we are sitting at $33,000 out of 50000 It has been jumping up. So let's see those donations roll in. We can still mm -hmm. do it, everyone. You'll mm -hmm. love to see it. Also, the donate, uh, the incentive has to be met before the run is over. So. Yeah, we got if you six. Win. We got, no, we got like eight-ish songs left. Uh, so we really got to oh, start. Gosh, yeah, get we're, we're getting over to the end. Yeah, we need we're to getting kick up that to the into end. high gear. Kick that into high gear. Share it with everyone. We, we, mm -hmm. you, you want these twenties? It's important. <laughs> Builds character. <laughs> All right, I think we can warm down though. Are you ready? Just kidding. Uh... <laughs> inhale, 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 inhale. inhale. Die. Ah. <laughs> so yeah, there was a haunted house in there. We'll explain that in a little bit, in a couple songs now. But we're in tier four now. Here this we song, go. This song is called Him. Uh, it is by Zut, and it is from Poppin Music, and it was crossed over into Sound Voltex. Um, this is a huge difficulty jump. The previous tier, tier three, contained 12s, 13s, and 14s. 
This is a 16. Uh, <laughs> it's 16 it kind of just on throws a, you in. On the 20 part scale, there's something really special about the feeling of playing a 16 plus for the first time. And it just throws you into the worst gimmick you've ever seen in your life abruptly and tells you to just read it. Um, <laughs> it's called tier four because that's, that's how many tears you're gonna cry when you <laughs> have to play these <laughs> in a tournament bracket. Uh, this was the grand finals of Mods Bootcamp 3. Well, this was the first song of the grand finals of Mods Bootcamp 3. Um, and it really, it, it builds, it takes everything that you've seen up into the tour, up in the tournament so far to its logical extreme, really. Like, the difficulty is at max. Uh, the max for what we'd consider fair, anyway, because it's very easy to make extremely unfair mods. So, like, all of this is, like, actually possible. Like, uh, otherwise it wouldn't really be a game at all. You just have to memorize, like, a thousand arrows, and that's... That's not that's actually no fun. fun. Like, people aren't doing that. People are reading this based on the color cues, the direction of the notes, the horizontal and vertical spacing. It all sort of comes together. Uh, the foot parity, so you you can make very educated guesses on which arrow is next, because it can only logically be a few uh, possible spots. But we do have time for another donation. All right, we have $4,261 from Hooligan, who says, I decided to donate $1 per note in Spooty's longest combo during this showcase, but I was starting to become legitimately worried that he was going to drain my entire bank account. <laughs> mad respect to Spooty for continuing to perform seemingly inhuman acts of gaming, and mad respect to him and all of the other runners, volunteers, staff, commentators, and everyone else who continues to support an important organization doing important work. P.S. Please, Spooty, don't pull off an even longer combo. My wallet is begging you. <laughs> <laughs> got the shooting is stars at the end. Unreal. Yeah, you got to read the reflection of the shooting star notes in the lake. That's one of that was one of my favorite effects to write. It was also one of the first effects I wrote for NBC3 as a whole. And Ooh, call out post. And <laughs> Windu. Hello, Windu. One of the mods pioneers. The uh, shout out <laughs> to Windu, one of the original pioneers of the not of the ITG modding scene as a whole, alongside Brother Mojo. Uh, Dark Link and a few others I'm probably forgetting to mention right now. This file is basically a condensation of Windows' entire, at this point, 15 or 16 year uh, ITG modding career. We basically just took all of his files and compressed it down into two minutes. There is literally one reference every four beats, sometimes more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This whole file is just a giant love letter to him and all he's done for this community. Yeah. He's made a lot of content. <laughs> yeah, it influenced plenty of us. Like, mm -hmm. like even seeing this brings back so many memories of like Windu's old work and this background in particular. <laughs> yeah, it's like just stock footage he bought from like uh, yeah, but it, it's yeah. like those strong associations. <laughs> mm. Oh, and so Haunted House jumps. It's when, uh, you'll see this right now. This will explain it. There it is, it's right Haunted there. House. Yeah, it, where it looks like, like an up down, but then it's a left right. Yeah, you're so, gonna really see how long this community has been going on for if you really dig deep into where all these effects came from. This is one of my favorite effects in this whole thing. <laughs> It, it's so readable, even though it doesn't look like it should be readable to a practice time. <laughs> yeah. All right, one more donation. Ooh. All right, we have $200 from Anonymous, who says, putting some money down for the Step Mania bonus round. Thanks to all the staff for the great event so far. And let's get to 2 million for that door reveal. Thank you, Anonymous. Yeah. Thank you, Anonymous. I also want to know what's behind that door. I do too. What's behind door number one? All egg. right. Got more raves by Egg. You <laughs> may or may not have seen the Groove Coaster before. Well, I got really bored one day and decided to entirely recreate the whole 3D environment and background animation for Got More Raves using nothing but a text editor and a lot of free time because uh, model rips were not available for Groove Coaster, so most of this 3D geometry is handwritten. 
and painstakingly pixel measured using flash and just sort of hand time by watching a YouTube video of the chart over and over again. Um, it, I didn't make that sound like any fun at all, but I, I don't know. <laughs> if you like just vibing and coding while listening to a cool song, that's mm -hmm. something you, just, you could just do. <laughs> you just do that. <laughs> yeah, the rhythms, these rhythms are so complex. And also, you know Groove Coaster, that's ad libs. Oh. oh no! Oh, a mine hit. That was a mine, not an ad lib. <laughs> Ooh. How much how much is it for hitting a mine? We didn't establish that in our contract. Oh, true. I totally forgot about that as well. I just kind of assumed that Spooty would not hit any mines because he's a gamer. <laughs> Five dollars each mine. No! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. You're gonna kill me! <laughs> I thought we were gonna make it ten because the miss is one dollar. You know? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that makes Only sense actually. Line. Yeah, that makes a thousand cents. Uh, that's a pickle, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it just comes in and it's all distorted. Shoutouts to all the other games that featured this song. I put the the charts at the appropriate timestamps in the background of the music as well. And just before the end of the song, we have time for another donation. All right, we have $5 from Zerla who says, the kind of things the Not ITG community has achieved is absolutely incredible. Everyone there is so supportive and welcoming of new players. Let's get that bonus incentive met. Friendly reminder to select which incentive you want when you're sending in your donations. We have just under $8,000 left, or just over $8,000 left to meet that incentive. We can do it, everyone. So Let's get it. this is a collaboration file between Daiki and, or wow, I said myself, <laughs> between me and Taranuk. Are you ready for the worst thing that you've ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> Hold so, on to your pants. Jumping right into things, this effect is a great example of hilarious effects where the play are visible for exactly two frames in the middle, and you need to look at that in order to read properly. A quick interlude references uh, the white notes from Sayonara Plant Wars for MBC2. This next section is what we call smooth brain power because of MBC2 file for brain power that used sideways rotations like this. However, we made the rotation smooth, and they also rotate in the wrong way the second time around. Oh, I don't think we fixed the screen. But he bounced his call back to NBC2's Esen. There's a tiny break in the mess. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> well, this is just a funny movement, really. Uh, it sounds like you're at a loss for what to say. Oh, World you. War is uh, shout outs to My Hero Academia for the concept of the sprite coming into existence while the playfields are being tossed around like, like from cross infection in NBC2. Then you get a uh, Preserve Valkyria slides into Sayonara Planet Wars, big and small things, and then everything happens again, and it's spinning, and it's even worse the second time around somehow. <laughs> Shia was a transition, and some censored screen bounces along with more Preserve Valkyria slides. Oh, this song goes too fast. <laughs> but the ending is something else. True. Ooh. So you may notice that the song is actually continuing to speed even further up. So... This final section. Basically, you need to watch the bottom and delay when you're hitting uh, the notes because they slow down before they hit the receptors. However, the top half of the screen is com being completely destroyed by a meme. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. And coming straight out of that, we have a 250 BPM 16th drill, just in case you hadn't already failed. Ooh. And the Haunted Plus Ultra, which is an Thank ultimate haunted house. Thankfully, the ending fades out before all the arrows are hit, so hopefully the slowdown isn't too hard to time. Oh, and now we're in the fun. Oh no! I watch you. I watch you people bounce that file back and forth, and I'm still exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> so we go from probably the rudest song in the pack to the rudest sight read in the pack, which is seeing the file for the first time is called a sight read. It's a music notation term. Um, this is just a generally Goodbye. kind of incomprehensible sight read, I would say. And <laughs> it's still possible if you're if you're good, but. I would say this is just on the border of fair uh, in terms of uh, what's actually possible. Uh, this is rated 18 out of 20 on our difficulty scale. And then for a chance to see the 20, you know what to do. Get yeah, them donations in for that bonus game. Time do for a donation? Quick. Yeah, for sure. We have $5 from Kalobi who says, let's get this bonus, bonus incentive met. I want to see the 20. Can we get a $5 train? Let's go, everyone. We have just over $6,000 left to go. We are almost there. Come on, let's get it. 
let's get it. We're so we've, close. We've been pushing all marathon. <laughs> we only have like three more songs? Four yeah. after this. Four. Yeah. That okay. white square in the top left uh, is, a, is actually a bug. Uh, we call him Jeremy. Uh, you can ignore him. He's not hurting anyone. Yeah. The only person that's being hurt is the screen, which has been sliced in half. <laughs> With a hold sword. The sword effect is actually a hold. Yeah, the hold like player whose long hold slices the screen in half is an effect I was super, super proud of, honestly. <laughs> Just coming up with the idea, I felt like my brain expanded when I was like, you can use player two's hold to slice the screen in half. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, and to some people in chat saying that this is memorized, it is not. People do read this level of mods, and we have an online tournament to prove that people can read stuff this hard. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. We're going to head straight into UKSRT's probably most threatening character. Another virus, this time a computer virus. Her name is Scold. And you are inside the computer, and that's not good. You should not be in a place with a virus. <laughs> it's oh, a very, sense. very violent, violent mod file. This is also an 18, but it's people consider this like a very high 18. Like this one's close to 19. Um, so we're reaching the top end of what difficulty looks like. But this is it's very oh, right. out. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need arrows anymore. We got some Guitar Hero notes. We got some Pump notes. Ooh, we got that, some that, Tycho That super arrows. fast drill is really rough. It is. Mm. But bear in mind, it's not its not all violence. Like, you gotta, you gotta fit the song. A lot of these files are good about picking, like, the right times to have violent things happen and the right times to have calming things happen. This is, yeah, this is no calming. Extent. Look at this. Ah, I'm so <laughs> relaxed right now. <laughs> Daiki was... I'm sorry, Spooty. <laughs> I don't remember what breath. I had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> but yeah, let's get a donation quickly. All right, we have $50 from Teddy Bear, who is a bear, who says, can we get a quick check to make sure Spooty isn't going to catch fire? <laughs> Thanks, I think that's there. I think that's Mods Boot Camp 2. There was a file called On Fire, so that's where you'll want to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we're we're always coming up with the one. Man. We really are. Yeah, we only have, like, four songs left after, three songs left after this, I think. And two. just over three, oh, just over $2,000 left to go, actually. So we are getting there. Let's oh, we go, can get everyone. There. Oh, no, this is the, fi the finale medley. We got to go, chat. <laughs> True. <laughs> this is the Anyways, longest is the, the longest file. Yeah, the longest file, though. It is a medley of four songs. Uh, it was a huge collab between everyone on the couch, me, Taro, Nuke, and Hal. I did this uh, first section with help with uh, Taro for getting all these graphics and rooms assembled. But it looks like we're just going through some endless hallways. I'm not sure what's too special about a finale. Oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> so yeah, um, you can do a lot with this engine, such as stringing how many play fields <laughs> 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 We should I also mention this is purely not now. ITG right here. Yeah, this is not ITG. This is peak and ITG. Yeah. I and all these assets are also hours. 2D as well. Like, it's just a 3D environment with 2D assets. But oh my gosh, I could stare at this effect actually forever as it starts twisting around as you're moving through. Oh boy. True, true, true. It's so crazy how this came out. Mm -hmm. Like, it's still, it's still like a, it's a, a staple in oh. mods graphics today. Quick shout outs to Weatherfell Games, uh, creator of The Duck and the Turtle, uh, Marbles and Checkers. Uh, Peking Boo, who is the dance pad player you've probably seen at GDQ before, plays games on a dance pad. And these are his characters. Uh, we're friends with him. Like, I, I know him from earlier. We both made Step Mania things in the past, actually. Um, and yeah, just support him. Support him. Yeah, he's making a they're game. They're just with chilling the there, They're playing Go. Oh my god, we are $1,500 away. Oh, so close. So And close. I kind of want to leave this in. hallway. You still got a little time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Song two, Halcyon. Mm -hmm. It's my section now. Those rhythms uh, are bad. <laughs> uh, this section is 
the hardest section in the file, I think. It's very... A lot of context switching, a lot of really fast transitions and column swaps, a lot of really weird rhythms, and you just gotta kind of just deal with it. Uh, yeah. Receptors here are just trading their their own receptors with each other. It's like, it's like, what is even going on? You really gotta be on your A game to follow on in any of this, even as a top player. Oil painting shader, good stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is where the real difficulty begins. I made this uh, this mod with the intention of you having to read back into the uh, the z-axis plane depth that the notes have, just enough so that you can chunk ahead to not miss the transition, but it's still really hard. Hey everyone, I'm just going to interrupt really quickly to say our incentive is met! We yes, let's go! Let's, let's go! go! We get to show the thing! We get to show the thing! The thing! <laughs> 46! The thing! <laughs> we get to show the thing! For the first time, oh my mind God, you. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the section earlier, but harder and uh, water. And Hydration water. check, by the way. Hydration check, sorry, Spoody. <laughs> Not for Spoody. <laughs> oh. So, end of song two, into song three. This is my section. I am a very big fan of. Uh, PlayStation graphics, PlayStation era, so we used a lot of game art tricks from the P early PS2 era to make this very low file size, run quite efficiently. Uh, go into a quick Archaea reference, uh, shout out to Low Hero. Um, you got the floor notes in the river and the sky notes in the air. <laughs> in the... <laughs> and now we have a particularly mean context switch where the arrows rotate into wrong directions as they go away from the Beholder Eye emblem in the middle. Uh, that is the villain's logo. And now they start to screen wrap. Just follow the eye. That is where you can see and where the arrows might be rotating. crossover as well. And point. Boy. Another <laughs> transition into the worst gimmick you've ever seen in your whole life. And it just tells you to read it. Uh, this file is a 19, by the way. This is what 19 out of 20 looks like. Thanks to you guys, we get to see the 20s. Um, mm -hmm. This gimmick is actually not super bad. Well, until it gets it super, super bad. No, it, it, yeah. it's pretty bad. It's, it's pretty I, bad. I heard someone in chat's no sugar about coating. Waterfall? Uh, here's your waterfall. And a this, forced double step? This waterfall uh, is actually inspired by Melee's Congo Jungle stage. It turns out if you put a bunch of cylinders together and make them a little bumpy and start rotating them, it looks like very, very, very convincing water. That's all I'm doing to make that water. It's not like a, I'm not like a genius or anything. I just slapped <laughs> some cylinders together. Yeah. And uh, this clock those, simulation on the paths. Those yeah, wires that's... coming from Yin Bao, the villain's wings, are an actual cloth simulation. I just felt like doing that. I, I'm just showing off at this point, but that's not <laughs> IG. Aren't we all it's with flexing. this? <laughs> you kind of got to do that for yeah, a final check. Check. Like Waterfall. True. Good luck timing this, by the way. This part is just very, very strange rhythm as we head into Black Emperor by Chroma, the final song of this medley. And then we got a little bit of voice acting. Yeah, this whole thing was a really big... When this tournament actually ran, uh, between the rounds we had voice acted and animated cutscenes actually at the time. So this, a lot of the state is actually tied into the story, but we cut all the story elements for marathon purposes. Uh, you can but watch the... all of them on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, get all the play fields sucked into a black hole. What the heck, Spoody has 16, 1.6k combo going into the end? Wait, did he combo the entire medley? Oh no, my god! It's not done yet! He comboed the whole no medley! <laughs> That's a medley Spoody. full combo! What, what are you the doing? Once before. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. First combo? Alright. Oh! The game just crashed. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, let me just boot it up. Let me just restart it real quick and we'll, oh, I'll just manually boot up the credit sequence. <laughs> oh. Alright, good oh, enough. Oh no, but that means we don't get to see. <laughs> that means we, uh, we have to go and hand We're count judgments. No, We're donating donate. sixty nine sixty nine. We we can I do that. You can do that. Estimates was sixty nine sixty nine, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna pop in with a couple quick donations quickly sure. while we set things back up. Go right ahead. <laughs> uh, the game just does this, right. by the way. This is no problem. That's never so happened before. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so we have $50 from Kalaria, who says, let's get those 20s. Thanks, Spooty, for making and hosting the co-op tournaments over the years at Rumbles in the Prairie and being a wonderful community member in dance games, necro dancer, and more. Okay, so, yeah, just one more song in this right now. Is the, is yep. the Can you share your screen again as well? Uh, we'll wait for that. Oh. All right, well, here are the credits. So, Hal did the NBC logo, NBC3 logo, which is a pretty obvious parody of the Sound Voltex 3 logo. Um, yeah. Yeah, this whole project was a big collaboration. Uh, this song was a collab between Hal and I. Uh, this was played after the medley. Tarunuk and the winner, Telperion, uh, got to sight read it live. We spent like a year to date on this project, and plenty of blood, sweat, tears went into this. So there was actually a lot that wasn't showcased. Plenty of voice acted cutscenes that are all available on YouTube, a lot of art asset assets, and a couple extra files uh, that will be available in the full download. Um, so yeah, huge shout out to everyone who has had a hand in Mods Bootcamp 3, big or small. Just a big passion project. And personally, having this run in the marathon is really special, especially this song in particular. Uh, during development of this chart, uh, my grandfather was diagnosed and quickly passed away from cancer, actually, so uh, a lot of the feelings of this song definitely went into that, and I'm just so happy and honored, really, to be able to be a part of this cause, because it really means the world to me, uh, helping to be able to raise money for this cause. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Huge shout outs to Spooty for running this. He's still standing somehow. <laughs> uh, shout outs to Taro and Hal, uh, the big mm -hmm. project buddies, and everyone who makes AGDQ possible. Y'all amazing. Thanks so much. Uh, all information about Not IGG is also available on our website, notii.tg, N O T I.tg. That includes game downloads and a link to our Discord. Uh, we're super friendly and welcoming towards people. Uh, interested in playing or looking at great content. Mm -hmm. We have new people coming in basically every day trying to figure out how to play and how to make their own mods. So Our server is ridiculously active, but don't worry, our moderation team is ridiculously competent. So, <laughs> and that can be time right there. Unfortunate time game crash there means we don't get to see my overall stats from the whole marathon. But we can that count is it. The NBC3 showcase. Mm hmm. We'll we'll, we we'll, we'll we'll find out what, how he did later, or mm. it could just be a mistake. I mean, the runners never show their splits in the marathon runs. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's a great parallel, I'd say. All right, we and, um, we do have the bonus. And yeah, Scooby, you get to take just, a break. <laughs> I do just want to touch on uh, some. Uh, there was a uh, briefly uh, there was a quote shown in the uh, credit sequence there that uh, I know Taro really likes about uh, when you stand on the shoulders of giants, you can see really far. Um, and I just want to say that, you know, the non-NTG community has, I think, taught me that uh, when we all build each other up and help each other out um, in our endeavors, you know, creative, like, the, like here or otherwise, I think, you know, there's a little bit of giant in all of us then. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Let's go. <laughs> anyway, Wait, everyone, somebody thanks, thanks so much for, <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for all the donations towards the bonus round. Uh, we will be playing some 20s and stuff in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so before we do that, we're just going to be reading a couple donations and taking a little break so that Spooty can also have a bit of a breather. <laughs> Definitely deserved. All right, so we have a couple donations here. We have $1,000 from Anonymous who says, can Spooty have a little breather as a treat? <laughs> and... <laughs> Absolutely, uh, especially for meeting this incentive because of all y'all, we can definitely give Spooty a little breather. <laughs> all right, and we have $50 from Deron who says, boy, howdy, do I love stepping on arrows. Let's see some more arrows stepping, but made difficult. <laughs> all right, I know I'm really excited for the bonus runs. How about all of you? <laughs> okay, so we are going to be taking a short break, so hold tight, and we'll see you right after this.
All right. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your short break and that you also got a little bit of a breather. <laughs> We're going to read a couple more donations quickly. So we have $150 from Brochek, who says, I absolutely love the rhythm games at GDQ. Keep it up. All right, we have $50 from Deg, who says, My brain melted an hour ago, but I need more. Spooty is no normal human. Is this what it is to go even further beyond? <laughs> Thank you so much for the donations. All right, now we are going to head over to Shout for a quick prize segment. Take it away, Shout. What? We're, I'm, I'm memeing at chat. Why do I got... Really? Look, this is simple. $25 minimum donation. PlayStation 5. It's right here. It could be where you are. $25. Donate now. Also, Prime Gaming. Make that train happen. What else do you need? Go. All right. Thank you so much for that prize segment. We have a couple more donations before we hop into the bonus segment here. We have $250 from Kazara, who says, This Step Mania exhibition is absolutely wild. Mad props to Spooty for somehow being able to read all this. We have another $5 from Stealthfire101, who says, Hey, chat. I know it seems hard to believe at first, but Spooty doesn't have these songs memorized. He's just that good. All right, so it sounds like we are ready for the extra, extra hard chart. So let's go check out this bonus, bonus incentive. <laughs> we'll see you over there. Take it away again, Spooty. All right, everyone, again, thank you so much for all the support, both, both, both first in getting the game into the block, uh, into the schedule, and then getting this bonus block enabled. So, um, yeah, as was mentioned before, mods are rated on a 20-point scale, and we only saw up to 19s. Uh, so we'll be seeing some 20s in this block, and some other very hard, like, upper end 18, 19, 20. And I, you may have, uh, some of you may have seen me mention before that I had some surprises in store for the bonus block. Um, for everyone. And that includes for my commentators, too. Mm hmm. Huh? So, we're gonna be starting with, uh, with Doppelganger, which is uh, another file by Taro. But, hey, guess what, Taro? We're mm. playing the 19. What? Oh, no! What do you mean we're playing, playing the 19? The 19 to this chart. <laughs> oh, Dude, that's okay, so let's no. go. Let's go. What? Oh, so Taro, you're good. Okay. What? Okay, so Doppelganger. Uh, I learned that to commentate this song, you have to talk really, really, really fast. So this was the final part of the final round of UK SRT 10, which was in October. Uh, by the way, shout out to Simple Flips. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually the first shader that I uh, wrote, like entirely on my on my own. Um, shaders are quite fun when you start getting into them. Just like go on Shader Toy, look up some tutorials. It's a, it's really a great time. Uh, so this is probably the meanest context switch I've ever written. You notice that the, of the four playfields on screen, one of them will be brightly lit and the others will be black. The one which is lit is actually moving around the screen in a clockwise direction, and you have to follow it. Otherwise, you'll end up stuck reading a playfield that doesn't have any meaningful information on it, as the receptors are sort of disappeared into the ether. So you gotta just keep moving your eyes around the screen. And we go straight out of this section. Uh, with a little bit of stream, actually. <laughs> Into another section about, remember when we said that the white arrows are misleading information? Well, at the start, you can see that they're flipped, but at, eventually, it turns out that they're all spinning, so you just gotta remember that the white ones are the flipped ones. <laughs> now we move into another context switch that was quite mean. 
I like to call this one spooky action at a distance. You have to keep chunking and switching between reading the near portal and the far portal. Otherwise, you're going to end up looking at a play field that doesn't actually have any arrows on it at all. It's spooky and then, action at a distance. Spooky <laughs> action at a distance. And we go into the references. Lots of references to stuff we've already seen. So we got the background from Voltex Taiso. We got Boku Hero Academia. We got him. We got an RPG that you didn't see. And you got the Bumpies from Juggle. Quick mini game, you know, the usual. <laughs> the usual. <laughs> we got another lateral. <laughs> oh no, you I forgot to install Counter Strike Source. <laughs> so now, uh, I put a bunch of play fields together. Some of them will actually freeze and turn white because you know Windows kind of unreliable sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Do you have your Battle.net account uh, all set up correctly? Oh, it's a by the way? Bethesda account. You need a Bethesda oh. account to view the next three notes. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to literally read the notes. Yeah, this is probably terrible. the funniest gimmick I've ever written. You literally just got to read it. Don't know what to say about it other than you just read it. That was just a bunch of words. This file is incredibly complicated to commentate. So much happens so fast. <laughs> this, oh, is, boy. this is an atom. You just kind of first in, first out cue this. Like, the first arrow that appears is the first arrow that you hit. You just gotta keep track of that. Uh, now, we're moving on to a section I call Hell Orbs. Uh, I wanna see your, uh, can we get some oh. orbs in the chat? Oh. Literally a demo scene uh, thing I created. It uses a domain repetition to make an infinitely scrolling 3D scene with play fields on each orb. Spooty has to keep darting his vision between the orbs. The orbs get a bit scrungly, though. So <laughs> by the time they get too scrungly, the main one has appeared in the middle again. Spooty can go back to reading that. Uh, we get punched out Punch. of there. Uh, straight into another shader. This one was written by uh, Shane of rhomboid.com. Uh, there's a, also a separate, like, independent shader applied to the notes themselves. It's making them move in this kind of really wiggly, melty way. But let's cool off. <laughs> <laughs> Dunked in the water again. Remember that breaks are kind of important. Um, as he menaces, the boy menacingly walks towards us for the final section of the song. This is a really, really intense stream. It's not that hard to read. But the chart is just so dense, and Smoothie is really going at it. I, d I did not expect him to be playing the 19. I just, I don't have words for it. This is so much harder than what was originally planned for the bonus block, and he hasn't failed. And pass? Ooh, hello? He passed it. You can't just pad past that on I command. I think he's the first person in the world to pad past that. People <laughs> keyboard past this. 87. <laughs> this is this is a first in the world. Like Pat What pass. is wrong with you? <laughs> uh, first documented. Uh, I have a 92 on it. What do you what? mean you have a 92 you on it? <laughs> 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 I've never I'm seen sure anyone sure pass this now, before. <laughs> I've, I've never seen anyone pass this before. I would like some proof, mister. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see that metric <laughs> All right, so, all right, so that's that's our first one. Doppelganger is a little bit of chaotic, uh, you know, exudes a lot of chaotic energy. But um, we're gonna be moving on to our first twenty. Uh, without the, without the. Yeah, no jump scare, no jump scare. Oh yeah. I, I, I'll be nice to you, Chad. I won't jump scare you. Yeah. We'll play the no jump scare version. <laughs> so oh, that I'm was a nineteen. This time is twenty. Intense. Um. You can beat the M16 first. That's generally faster than I can move, so I'm gonna have to focus real hard on this. This is um, really serious. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. um, this is a file by K Puma, so someone uh, outside the MBC3 crew. Happy to give uh, other folks outside of the commentator crew here some yeah. rep. I'll let them take over now because I'm gonna need to focus. Get ready for breathtaking graphics. Like, K Puma yeah. does such incredible work on their aesthetics in their file. And it just all comes together in such a good show. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned in uh, Cloud9 during NBC3, uh, the visuals in this game can get insane, depending on what you want to do. <laughs> this is like full capability of what not IP, what not IPG can do. 
Yeah, it has everything. It has shaders, it has sprites, it has like animated textures, it has a visualizer in the background done with some 3D models, dude. handwritten geometry, the water reflection of the moon. And it's you read this? really, really hard. I can't read this at all. <laughs> uh, there were no real like 20s that the community like canon agreed were 20s. It mostly just stopped at 19. Uh, but I would be pretty happy with calling this the first official not ITG20. I think yeah. I think it's earned it. It's it's not only really hard, but it's also really fairly designed. I would say. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that this is a much harder chart than uh, than it is intended. The intended chart is, I think, uh, seven around there. I didn't get here, but didn't quite see. But this, this chart is introduces a much harder chart. Talk about the <laughs> like that down, that you want to talk giant about the tech, down like syncopated you? jack. Uh, yeah. So there's uh, now some things called foot switches, which uh, people usually only have in uh, tech charts, not. Not in mods, because those are really hard to parse while you're doing mods. Where you uh, press the one arrow with one foot, and then you press the same arrow with your other foot, so you can hit one note really fast, like a down arrow. Uh, and those mines are also forcing you to take your foot off the note that you just pressed to instead hit a different note, and it's marking that specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many technical elements that generally don't make it into mod charts that this thing has. Yeah, That's there are a bunch of graphics there before too. It's also just incredibly fast. Like I feel like I feel like I've already said this, but it's it's 220 BPM, people. That's 14 point like three steps per second. It, it's very. Very fast. It's very a lot. Also, this game design of bringing back all of the previous environments that were shown in the file in this way. Like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of like look at one of the strips if you're if you're good. If you're <laughs> one of the chicken strips. Do you wanna do you wanna get a quick donation in? Ooh. I can if you'd like. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. We have a hundred dollars from Evan who says, Spooty is not human. We are not worthy. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. It's true. Oh, that's a pass. Oh my god, I think that's a pass. I could tell that was getting a little bit hairy life bar wise. Remember yeah. what oh. Hell said earlier, ten misses is a fail. Ten mm -hmm. consecutive misses is a fail, and you need ten combo to get your life bar back once it starts going down. So mm. you just just cleared that on command. That's a little bit of a dicey run. On command, ooh, oh, that's a pass. Oh, oh, look at the barely, the barely, the barely, the the barely on the grass. Right. That's that's barely. Much, if I do say so myself. <laughs> that looks like uh, that's a uh, barely. I believe means less than ten percent health left, which yeah. means another miss at that point will fail you. Mm -hmm. the so barely. you're one miss away from failing two times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> that's nutty. <laughs> Ooh, man, it's getting spicy in here. Yeah, and I would also like to point out that most players tend to have a bar behind their pad that they hold on to for a external uh, support and also so that they can play faster things a little bit more easy. Spooty's doing this all without that. Like He's relying on his balance and mm -hmm. foot speed alone. Now, so I, need that is I, need to, I need to play something a little easier. And this is what? really exciting for me to play for another reason. So this is the 46th file in Mods Boot Camp 3. New DLC? New, New DLC. DLC. This has not been seen outside of the people in the booth right now. So, mm -hmm. we're going to be debuting some new content for y'all. Let's go. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so excited. It's Joe. Shoutouts to Terry. He's a game designer. They are a game designer and animator from, uh, I think they're Canadian, but they are a very popular modder in the Not ITG community with their own series, Rhythmverse Mods Project. And we brought in a character from Rhythmverse Mods Project into MVC3 DLC to show off for this marathon. Mm -hmm. File made by Daiki. Yep. And it tries to capture the essence of Terry Files, which is a lot of blowing ease mods and uh, just general pretty just pretty gimmicks you know yeah. 
There was a gimmick earlier that used uh, the notes that once you hit them, they actually came back to haunt you uh, in a, a different play field. Uh, this, however, is a callback to a couple of windy stuff, actually. <laughs> this is from Pet Peeve from Mods Boot Camp 1, where the play fields are... You can see exactly where the arrows are. They're just alternating what's being shown at any given time. And then we'll see a little bit of the return of those notes that come back. You'll be able to see this pretty clearly, where the notes will flow right into the next time they need to be hit. Shoutouts. Mm -hmm. People who know what this are will know what this are. <laughs> yes. That is a direct shoutout. I want to see Terry's reaction. Right away. <laughs> yeah. I, want, I want to see what Terry's saying about this. I do as well. Bit of a silly yeah. love callback in the background there. Yeah. You might silly notice being a those fan. notes in the background that are uh, continuing to spiral around menacingly. Uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like getting punched in the face a bunch of times to end the file. What do you mean you full comboed it? What do you mean <laughs> you full comboed 96? it? <laughs> My best is like a yeah, 75. Easier. <laughs> easier. <laughs> <laughs> My and best is like a 75 on this. <laughs> All right, with that, I've got one more one more surprise in store here. Wait, a surprise? So, I'm sure uh, Dikey uh, especially noticed that during the marathon, we skipped right past us all. Oh, no, you're going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> what? And I have a very good reason for having skipped that. Uh, and, you know, I apologize to Dikey for cutting his song out, but we'll play it now. But... <laughs> In, in, in exchange, I want to know, if the mod scale is a 20-point scale, then why am I playing a 22? What? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? <laughs> what? This no. is a fruit defender. This was supposed to be one of the tier four that was a uh, bonus, but I was like, it, it got skipped. It didn't say anything about it. I didn't realize. I didn't even notice. 22. <laughs> No! This is so bad. Well, society was not meant to handle numbers bigger than 20. <laughs> what even comes after 20? 22 is not after 20. There's another number there. <laughs> I have never passed this. I have, I have never passed this. I, I just kind oh of assumed God. it was a joke. <laughs> but yeah. We're getting into the realm where this? mods are getting so hard that difficulty is starting to become kind of arbitrary. Yeah, it's just hard. That's what the difficulty truly the difficulty is. Difficulty is just hard. Once you start raising the temperature, like past the Planck temperature, it, the physics stops making sense. <laughs> I don't think it's actually perfect. Sense, right? <laughs> Why are you comboing this? This Wait, is not allowed. It. He's comboing it. Oh, oh God, oh, no. spoke. That was a lot of misses. I think that was pretty close. Cool. Oh, yeah, this is getting this is getting close to a fail. How hard is he the ending? Yeah, so though. Oh god, the ending's the worst. <laughs> deals, oh, deals, deals. deals. The funny ones. What is wrong with you? Those first. <laughs> I have not seen this in so long. Oh my god, I haven't. <laughs> Yeah, so this isn't meant to be this hard, <laughs> Yeah, it's not meant this to be this hard. This is the hard version that's made yeah, we have so to, it. to be hard. Oh, it's yeah, we have to iterate that these, these charts are not the intended difficulty. <laughs> they are not the intended difficulty. I don't know if that's a pass with those minds. It's, a, it's not even a... That's a comfortable life bar. It's not even close. Yeah, no, Spooty is doing this. It, Spooty did not tell us that he was able to do this. This is this is a surprise for us, too. You want to know something really funny? What? No. I have a 92 on this, too. 92? What are you two? <laughs> um, um, uh, are we going to have to start introducing 20s into the actual meta of the game? <laughs> I just walked away from his computer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh my so, god. Oh. How much time do I have left? I've got like 
one there's thing? one there's one more song i want to do i'm considering if i should do like a, a something a little easier to space it out <laughs> oh right yes yeah. no he said he said one more but with uh something a little easier to space it out in before it oh so yeah. it's like two minute song and then okay okay can I, I can play the two minute song okay okay cool all right so <sighs> yeah this is oh uh, this is actually uh, like uh, oh yeah oh this, yes. is good. this is a much easier song i'm not gonna play the 16 i actually can't do the 16 i would need to practice it more um <laughs> i'm just doing it because i need something easier before we go into our grand finale mm -hmm. we found the uh, 23 this so, file i want to kind of keep myself moving a little bit so is we're gonna play analyst. is what happens when you know how to write shaders. Cat, very pretty file. Yes, uh, FMS Cat, the person we mentioned a little earlier, is the person that actually uh, was a, a well-known demo scener from Japan. He came second at Tokyo Demo Fest at one point, which so that's a pretty big deal. Uh, they randomly walked up to us and went, yo, can I implement shaders in your game? Uh, I haven't written C++ before, so it might be a little bit rough. And then they disappeared into the code base for like three days, and then it was just done. And then the trend was immediately set. Yeah, and then they make content like this, which is... Like it's, how? It is a Actually, visual how? masterpiece, lots of references to DJ Max, lots of very shiny content. But look at that, the neon arrows. <laughs> I'm like the always rain. breathless when I look at this file. It's so beautiful. Any of the their files are really just... Path. It's just an absurd spectacle. And Cube, the reference to the cube, cube makes a return, but it's a little bit more wonky. The cube that we saw in Onishan High Tech is back, except now it looks like it came from the year 3000. Look at this graphics. I did not know Stepmania or any derivative could do this. That's the power of not ITG. Mm -hmm. And it could be yours for the price of zero dollars and zero cents. You can download this game right now. Let's if you want go. To get good at this game. <laughs> There's, I mean, it's not all ridiculous content like this. There's lots of easier stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Spooky actually recently made a bunch of easier content uh, just today for like easier versions of lots of chart, uh, mod charts from Mods Bootcamp One. So newcomers will have things to sink their teeth into. The charts aren't that hard. The mods. Mm hmm. Hmm. There's a, there's a decently sized pool for any player of any caliber. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, I'm feeling a lot better after taking it easier with that one. <laughs> that one, <laughs> that one easier. Yep. That one. I'm watching chat, Definitely. I'm watching okay. chat to see everyone thanks, who thanks is angry me, at that uh, statement. Letting me have the extra song just to kind of catch my breath there. Um, I figured it'd be better than just having me sit around for, for a second, for a minute, mm -hmm. you know? All right, mm -hmm. so we're gonna go on our grand finale of this bonus block. Uh, this was rated a 19 earlier, um, but community consensus seems to be that this is a 20. Yes. Unlike stuff like uh, Possessed by the Blood Moon, uh, the 20 to that, and the 22 to uh, Le Fruit de Fendu, uh, this one, which are, you know, those two are very based on having extremely dense and fast steps. This one is all about the mods. The mods mm -hmm. are just really hard to read. Um, and I figured this is a proper send off for the block because, um, you know, shout out to the Yeti for this t shirt block. Uh, the, the aesthetic on this song matches the aesthetic of this shirt exactly, so... And it's also gonna have the uh, references to a lot of previous boss songs. Some of which you saw earlier in the block. So, let's go ahead and send it off with the Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And yep. 20 is the intended difficulty for this. There is no other difficulty or hidden difficulty. It is just 20. Yep, this is the boss rush of boss rushes. <laughs> Pretty much. It's yeah, not so ITG the we're file. We're basically just going to be going through references after references here. So this is Lux Mortis from NJSRT by Searing. You can already tell the difficulty's already way up. <laughs> yep. Help. This song slaps, by the way. Oh, help. Check the document. Oh, this is Cosmic Railroad by Explosion. All right, we go straight into the coin, the worst gimmick you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Mods Bootcamp 3 by Taro, which is me, and transitioning right into... This is a Puro mashup. We saw that uh, a bunch of his files, like Snow Motion and Dark Matter earlier. Um, yeah, just a normal 
fairly normal transition. That's right. Uh, ah. <laughs> uh, transition straight into Tang Pong, which was a collab between me and Kuro Kuro from the KSRT 8 in 2016. And we transition straight from that into the Gat Medley uh, from UKSRT8, which was by me, uh, like a reference to that. And then it goes straight into another part of get the Gat Medley. This is actually the, the D-pad type configuration that you saw in the Shame Cube uh, back at Onichan High Tech. But then we go straight into the extra stage uh, after a few more arrows here. Uh, we go straight into the extra stage of UK SRT7 with another haunted house. The arrows before change it. before they reach the targets. Uh, you gotta watch out. Uh, this goes into the Sky of Sadness, which was the extra stage from UK SRT7. And straight from... Oh, you gotta watch out for the one that starts rotating. Straight from there into Dragon Lady, which was the final round of UK SRT1. And then the repeated arrows from HPT. This is a Kai Dash mashup, Fault plus Camera Ice plus Undiscardable, all at once. It's a, uh, it's just a mess. <laughs> Doom. <laughs> Doom. Back into Doppelganger with the uh, the Whippery Sphere. Uh, you got a big old battle. Can we get a little break? It's Disparagioia from uh, Celestial Harbor. Uh, uh, from that I did. <laughs> It's a it's a break until until this happens right here. Uh, yeah, fun fact: uh, Celestial Harbor was the first tournament to have online capabilities. True. So that people at home could play as needed. And we go straight into the Gap Two medley from EKSRT9, but you probably know it from Illness Lillen, which was just played in the Mods Bootcamp Three exhibition. And then and then it flips upside down. This part I literally just can't read. I just. I just don't know what's going on here. I, I just don't play this file for that reason. <laughs> Does Spooty still have a full combo? Uh, probably not. Uh, we transition out of that into him from, which was the first tier four that was played in the marathon. Um, this is a complete break, which is great. And then we have Nise Mono from Monster Mash 3, which is a huge seven person collab. That, uh, with an original song by Froms. Original song by Frums. Shout out to Frums. A single clap emoji for me. I'll count you in. Yep. Oh. Mm -hmm. Get ready to clap. One clap, chat. Three, two, exactly three, one. Two, one. Boom. Absurd death by Windu plus pieces of a dream at the same time. Yeah, this is this section is just so much if you're not ready for it. Uh, then it transitions into Matoy and Golden Rule. So Matoy being the extra stage of UKSRT 8, and Golden Rule being the first part of the last round of UKSRT 9. Transitions straight into Fafnir from MBC2, uh, MBC3, which we did just see. That was the really mean one with Jeremy. Uh, and Censored from MBC2 before closing off dramatically, uh, dramatically and climactically with a little bit of speech from our vocalist. <laughs> All right, and that can be time right there. That is the Phoenix. That's a pretty good run of it. Got to a double only on ignite. Ninety three single, single digit okay miss. For me. <laughs> SPCB. Yo, look at that combo. Almost eight hundred in the middle of it. <laughs> All right. Woo. Time. So and that Ooh. does it. That's all I've got for you guys tonight. Thank you again so much for donating to get this game into the marathon. And then again for the bonus block where I was able, where I just, you know, really pushed myself to the limit there. 210 BPM 16, stand there fast. Um, just want to give shout outs again to uh, the, the like UK SRT and uh, non ITG crowd. Um, it's been no secret, the last couple of years have been rough on a lot of, on a lot of us, but um, just uh, the direction of uh, you know given to me by a lot of the creative you know non ITG folks has really kind of helped me take care of myself in terms of you know getting my physical exercise in while I'm cooped up at home, um, and it, I don't know where I'd be without you guys honestly. Um, which uh, incidentally also shout outs to Eltech, uh, the uh, brand of pad I use. Uh, definitely a step up from the pads I was using before, um, and you know obviously works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, very sturdy for the price Thanks again as well. to uh, the three of you for joining me in commentary. No problem. Uh, as soon as as soon as you guys contacted me saying, "Hey, we might be on AGDQ," I was like, "Yes." 
<laughs> I'm, I'm on. I am on the couch for that. And, yeah, and Super yeah, um, to be here. Taro <laughs> mentioned it a couple songs ago, but yeah, my last surprise uh, for this scene, you know, as I close out the vlog, is that last night I chugged through all of the first mods boot camp pack and added new easy charts. Um, they are charts that are much, much, much less dense than anything you saw here. So if learning how to play this uh, this style of game looks like your cup of tea. Um, there's a great new pack that's uh, open for you guys, um, you know, with of newer, newer, easier files. Because um, previously, you know, there was kind of a barrier of entry to mod files of you have to have played a lot of DDR and you have to have built up a lot of patterns and be able to handle like eighth notes and such. Um, so I hope uh, I hope this uh, helps lower the barrier of entry and get some more people into it if you're interested. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, once again, thank you so much. Shout out to GDQ for having us. Uh, thanks so much and thanks for. for all your support for this great cause. I hope to see you guys again sometime on the stage. Um, any uh, last comments, guys? Uh, I would like to say shout outs to my two nephews, Taru and Theo, who are probably watching right now. Uh, I also want to say trans rights. Uh, anything else? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm just, I'm just speechless that just happened. <laughs> trans rights and also once and you can actually go and play this yourself at not i dot tg n o t i dot tg mm -hmm. sorry come on over if you want to play it's yeah, a little bit slow free but... to download and play so and if, if you want to get used to playing the game without the mods there's plenty of non-modded contents where the errors are just scrolling up old-fashioned like you, know, mm -hmm. you don't need a pad you can play it on your keyboard too so absolutely mm -hmm. and i think that is it from us yeah thanks guys awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Wow. Wasn't that incredible? Let's get some claps in chat for Spooty. That was amazing. We're going to read a couple extra donations here. We have $1,000 from Uneven Mike who says, Hello, GDQ. I've had a busy week of work and haven't been able to watch as much as I'd like, but I still want to support the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Also, what's behind the door? <laughs> we have another $25 from Irvi who says, Unsolved mysteries of GDQ. How can Spooty move so fast he breaks the game's meta? How can these commentators keep up and stay so amazing? What's behind ADEF's door? And how can we not pet a good dog? Donation goes to Pet Cerberus after this mesmerizing Stepmania exhibition. Thanks so much, Irby. All right. Well, I think we all need a breather after all that intense dancing. So we are going to take a quick break off to see the Yeti. All right, welcome back everyone. Good to see you. We're gonna be reading a couple extra donations. We have $25 from Fallen Isil who says, pet the dog. That is right. Get your donations in to pet the dog, AKA Cerberus, because our runners will definitely be seeing Cerberus a lot next run. We have $60 from Wally who says, here's my $20 for each head to pet that dog. Cerberus for best pupper.
All right, everyone, we are going to be heading over to our daily recap. So hold tight and let's recap the day. Welcome back to AGDQ 2022, everybody. Uh, thanks for sticking through the break and welcome to the daily recap for Friday. It, it's, it's Friday. That's awesome. And we are at $1.8 million raised for Prevent Cancer Foundation so far. This is absurd. You all are amazing. My name is Jay Obbs, and I am joined by Keezeron and Adef. Uh, gentlemen, we had a fantastic day today of runs, so didn't we? There's, so, there's so much good stuff. There's just, how, how do you keep track? Right. <laughs> there were so many good things, and we want to let you all know about some of the runs that you should check out. And okay, let's just get it out of the way first. Let's start with Step Mania. I know you all just saw it. I want to remind everybody real quick that this clip may have some flashing lights. For those of you who uh, need to look away for a moment, we will warn you, or we will let you know, rather, when it is done. But we literally took a random 30 seconds from this run. We have not seen this clip. <laughs> we, we genuinely haven't clipped. watched it. How, we have how? not at all. Where are the arrow? Where are the? Wait, wait, oh why are the, my God! Where's the, where's where's the st- <laughs> oh, I love the, that this is the clip we got. <laughs> yeah, we straight up picked random thirty seconds because we knew it would deliver. It did how not do matter. You do this? How do no, you actually not. play this? <laughs> This you got to watch this whole run by Spooty Biscuit. If you somehow missed the last what? hour, if you were catching this out, you got to watch this happening? run. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, that was incredible. Uh, definitely check that run out if rhythm games are your jam. And now let's move on to something maybe a little more zen. Generally, marble it up, keys. You want yeah, to talk about something? So, yeah, definitely. So you know. First off, it's a marble. You can't really like do any better than that. But we're going to take that- advantage of some collision momentum here. Right what? there, actually. Just zooms up to the finish line. All it took was just a genteel touch of the side of the cog, and you just <laughs> zoom to the moon. That's incredible. Do they have like a, an interesting name for that trick or anything like that? Coggers. Because <laughs> it's, it's pretty poggers, except it's a cog. Uh, yeah, uh, dad joke. Oh, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> oh, wait, hey, I just they, realized. Of course, I got that joke. <laughs> All the people. They can get away with it. That's incredible. All right, but uh, that was not the only run, obviously. So let's move on to the next one. Adef, you wanted to talk about the Yu-Gi-Oh. Run. Okay, so the whole Forbidden Memories one was amazing. We got to give a shout out, of course, to Keys and to Sky Bills, two friends of mine that put on an amazing show. Sky's doing this bonus run here where she's trying to farm for a Blue Eyes White Dragon. It's like a crazy crazy low drop rate and she gets it on the first duel the the bonus run <laughs> estimate 15 minutes it took two minutes it's <laughs> barely <laughs> over one percent that's how incredible that was it's barely over one percent you can see her popping and, off yeah <laughs> did she have to like go through the list twice to even confirm that it was yes there? yeah <laughs> because keys yeah. keys and spike were both like oh you got it and she was like did i <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's great well anybody who knows me knows that i was super looking forward to the it takes two run last oh, night oh, this, slash this morning and we are in one of the hardest skips of this game you've got uh, who is hyper controlling this plane and he just squeezes That's out so of, the, of the bounds yes. of the area there. There's just that little crack in the tunnel and he squeezes out. Now they're just flying out of bounds straight to a checkpoint and then their final destination. The entire run was full of just astounding gameplay. Like, my, my boy Hyper, he's Cody Main, you know, all the way. He was the one who taught me how to, how to run Cody. He was killing it at the beginning. So please check that one out. Uh, but of course, there are plenty more fantastic runs later in the day as well. Uh, and Keys, you had a, another, just a really fun one here, I think. Yeah, so we got Portal Reloaded here. So friendly reminder, green is time. So he goes back in time. Sets up a portal to receive this block. He's going to receive the block right about now. Back to the future he goes. He throws one hell of a curveball coming up just to get this block to where he needs to go. Back to the trilogy because I ran out of future and time and present jokes. And just an incredible curveball just to get everything moving. This entire run is just... its it's a it's a mind blow. It just really is. Yeah. It's, it's hard to keep up, but it's also just really familiar because it's Portal. Uh, it's so hard to think with two portals, let alone three. Yeah. Uh, and, and Adef, I, what was your next clip that you uh, had? So I wanted to snag Dark Souls. So this Dark Souls race was so good. The all bosses race between Dan Flesh and Regal. And Regal here is using the Dragon Tooth and manages to hit the Dragon Calamite midair like five, six, maybe what? seven times and kill the boss in midair, saving tons of time and in the fight. And it is so tight and he absolutely nails it. 
you got to be kidding me. That's oh, my God. <laughs> but still, if you're going to take Dark Souls from me, because come on, I, I love Dark Souls. <laughs> you know, I'm generally the Dark Souls guy here on like the, the interview team. Then I'm going to take one from you, Adef. I'm going to talk what? about Rockman and Forte here. Ahmad ran this one this morning. And, you know, we just saw some red tear stone ring You usage. can't steal Mega Man. This, this is not allowed. <laughs> I, I got it. I gotta steal it. We saw some red tearstone ring usage in Dark Souls, and he's using a similar thing here. He is at such low health right now in order to deal extra damage to this boss and then doing an AI manipulation as well. This game is notoriously difficult. Like, that is... It, that is what people know about this game is how difficult it is. And he had a fantastic run from start to finish. This is just one of many amazing moments. And speaking of amazing moments, we're definitely not done with them. The marathon is still going on, folks. We are going all the way to, through tomorrow. So I'm just curious, what are what are people excited for uh, coming up, you know, for the rest of the marathon. ADEF, what, what okay, I'm I am, this is like the run of the marathon for me. You cannot miss A Link to the Past, all bosses, no exploration glitch tomorrow. It's going to be played by Hoda Ruby, who is an absolute legend. If you've been around wow. speedrunning at all over the last 12 years, you've seen a Hoda Ruby run. You got to check out this. It is going to be so sick. Okay, cool. We'll be watching after that one. Keys, how about you? I mean, Hoda Ruby is speedrunning royalty at this point, but something we've seen a lot with GDQ lately is blindfolded runs. So I'm looking forward to watching something that the runner isn't going to watch in Sekiro. <laughs> it's going to be incredible. And, you know, it kind of humbles all of the gamers here just to kind of show, hey, this person can beat this game with <laughs> no vision. And it's just always an incredible watch. Absurd. I am super looking forward to watching that one. And uh, I'm also looking forward to our next run. That's right. It's going to be Hades, the all weapons of race. Course. I am so excited yes. for this. I think it's Isn't really it right cool. after this? It is. It's right after the Let's daily go. recap. Everybody should definitely stick around and be sure to get in donations. You know, just talking about our good boy Cerberus, the, the best dog. But with that being said, we've we've covered the runs and ADEF, I know. We're here at the daily recap for Friday, and unfortunately, we didn't we didn't quite get to two million yet. We're doing great. I know, I, I know, I know. And you know, there. gamers, it is tough for sure that we didn't get to see what was in the door. I'm disappointed too. But you know, ultimately, things like this happen, and we could still get there. But uh, you know, I just sorry, uh, my my phone's actually ringing. What? Dude, you can't be answering your phone. Come on, we told you you got to put this on silent. You We're on. professional. No, I know it's um, it's me. Huh. What? What? What do you what mean is, it's you? What is he talking about? It, what, he's taking a call in the middle of it. That's I can't believe this. I would have fired can, you over that. Can he even hear us? Did he only have sound in one ear? Adef, what's going on? Uh, sorry, guys. I just... Um, what are those lights? I just... Uh, what's going on? What? Is he okay? What? Adef? Adef? All right. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much to our amazing recap team for sharing some of the top clips from our day today. It's been such an incredible day already, and there is still so much more to come. We've already raised over $1.8 million for the Prevent Cancer Foundation, so let's read a couple extra donations. We have $10 from Dog Ambassador, who says, On behalf of all dogs, I say, pet that dog. We also have $250 from Nine Dragon, who says, Donating to help support Best Girl Meg keeps Zagreus in his place. Good luck, Hades Runners. Never forget to pet Best Dog Cerberus. All right, before we get started, we are going to take a quick break, so we'll see you back right after this.